Okay, so the next step in the progression is to now look at a series RLC circuit, which means we are taking a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor and placing all three of them together in series. So the two notes that I've listed here are the things that we have to know to figure out the circuit. So first, it is still a series circuit, and so the same rule is still true that the current is constant which means we're still going to be building our triangles from current vectors placed at zero degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. Now what's this next point all about? Eli the Iceman, it's a kind of mnemonic that helps us figure out where we draw all of our vectors. Okay, so Let's see what these letters represent. L, the capital L, represents inductance, right? So that's what that is. Inductance. So what do we know to be true about an inductive circuit? The relationship between E and I. And E is voltage. And I is current. So in an inductive circuit, we see that voltage comes first and current comes next, which means the voltage leads the current, or the way we typically say it, because that's the way we state it when we talk about power factor, is what is the current doing relative to the voltage? The current lags the voltage in an inductive circuit. So that's Eli, and he is an ice man, which means, what does C stand for? capacitance. And what's happening in a circuit that has capacitance, now we see the I, which is the current, comes first, and E, which is the voltage, comes next. So now we can see that in a capacitive circuit, the current leads the voltage. So these are things we already knew from previous lessons. But there it is, a nice way to remember it. Eli the Iceman. Current lags the voltage in an inductive circuit, and current leads the voltage in a capacitive circuit. Okay? Now let's draw our triangles. I don't have nearly enough room here because I put the vectors down so low. So I'm going to have to erase this. Okay? You guys have made notes of it. Refer to your notes regularly. I'm going to have to wipe off the board to start over. So back to our three current vectors. To build our three triangles, which represent So let's focus on the voltage. Talk about what's happening here understanding that once we get this triangle figured out, the other two are going to look exactly the same, right? So first of all, we have a voltage vector that will be in phase with the current, and that represents the voltage drop across the resistor, just like before, right? Just like in the series RL circuit and the series RC circuit, and now here again in the series RLC circuit, Still, what voltage gets dropped across the resistor is going to be in phase with the current. <clears throat> now, we look at Eli the Iceman. The voltage dropped across the inductor. The voltage is going to lead the current. So we're going to see the voltage leading the current. So there it is, at 90 degrees, the voltage vector leading the current vector. EL. Again, exactly as it was in the series RL circuit. Okay, what about the voltage vector representing the voltage drop across the capacitor? It's going to, so Eli the Iceman, in a capacitive circuit, the current leads the voltage, the voltage is going to lag behind the current, we're going to find it down here at 270 degrees, E C. 
okay? Voltage drop across the resistor, voltage drop across the inductor, voltage drop across the capacitor. <clears throat> How do we turn this into a right angle triangle? Okay, so here's the thing. When we try to understand what's happening in the circuit, okay, remember what we're doing is vector addition. Okay, so when we add vectors up, we place them tip to tail. Well, we placed EL tip to tail with ER. We also went and placed EC tip to tail with ER, didn't we? Well, what happens if we just ignore ER for a second and we just want to do the vector addition with EL and EC? Let me just grab a different color. I'm going to throw it in here and we'll erase it right away. So here's EL and place tip to tail with that is EC. I'm going to put it right here and it's exactly out of phase by 180 degrees, which means it's pointing back in the other direction. That's EC. What we're left with, and I'll use red, what we're left with is I'll call it ER for resultant, just for a moment, okay? That's E resultant after we add EL to EC. Because they're out of phase by, 120 to, by 180 degrees, what we're doing is simply subtracting them, right? Removing one from the other, and we're left with the difference, ER. Now, we can't use the label ER, okay? Because ER represents the voltage drop across the resistor. So E resistive, Okay, E resultant doesn't work. So what we're going to call that instead, and in textbooks, you'll actually see that there's an obvious, often no label whatsoever. Some people have made up their own labels. Some people don't use any labels at all. So I've come up with my labeling as well. And I'm going to suggest that EL is greater than EC. I maybe didn't do a really good job of drawing that. Let's shorten that vector just a little bit so that this becomes obvious. And I'm going to suggest that once we subtract this voltage vector from this voltage vector, we're left with this voltage vector. And what I'm going to call it is EX, okay? E reactive. So that is the voltage dropped across all of the reactive loads, both the inductor and the capacitor combined together to give us this value of EX, E reactive, okay? And that now allows us to draw our triangle. So the resultant vector, once we add up all of these vectors, because that's what we're doing ultimately, is adding all three vectors, okay? So we started here with ER, placed EL tip to tail, placed EC tip to tail and came back and landed here at EX, which ultimately created the resultant vector of adding up all three vectors. And so there is where we place our final vector, our hypotenuse, on the voltage triangle right there, and that is EA, the applied voltage, right there, the hypotenuse of the voltage vector. Okay, so we can eliminate all of that. That is just the demonstration of the vector addition. This is what we get as a result. Okay, so whatever this angle ends up being, it's going to be the same angle on all of our triangles. So there's R, there is XL. Keep that a little shorter, X, C, and we end up with what I'm just going to call X. Draw the hypotenuse, and this is Z. One more time. What kind of power is that? In phase with the current, that is our true power, TP. Okay, this is RPC, oh sorry, RPL, that's RPL, this is R, 
RPC, and this we'll call it RPX, which allows us one more time to draw the hypotenuse, and in our power triangle, what kind of power is that? That is the apparent power. Now when you do the exercises and when you put all the numbers and all on the table, okay, there's nowhere in the table that asks you for the value of x. Nowhere on the table that you have to put in the value for ex or rpx. Those numbers don't go on the table anywhere because they don't represent any specific part of the circuit. Okay, They represent this collection of the circuit. So it's kind of like when we did um, combination circuits where we had to redraw the circuit, group some stuff together to try and understand the entire circuit. It's the same kind of idea happening here. We're combining all of the um, reactive components together to give us a single value which we need to continue solving the circuit but doesn't actually uh, fit in the answer anywhere. Okay, we need that number because it is the opposite of a right angle triangle. Okay, but it doesn't represent just a portion of the circuit, it represents a collection of the circuit. So we're going to leave the lesson there for now. We're going to come back in a new video, put some numbers to this, and see if we can actually solve a problem. But those are the steps involved. Um, the final conclusion is power factor. Actually, let's go here before I hit stop. So power factor, still the same, right? It's still the relationship between true power and apparent power. It is whatever the angle theta is. But now it's really important for us to identify whether the power factor is leading or lagging, okay? I said that the voltage through the inductor was greater than the voltage through the capacitor, which meant that our resultant vector, the hypotenuse of our triangle, is leading our current. Now remember Eli the Iceman, it's, it's all about the current. Current here lags the voltage, and so we would say it's a lagging power factor. It is quite possible that the calculations might determine that when we cancel out these two vectors, we end up with a vector that's down here. In which case, we would say that the current is leading the voltage, and we end up with a power factor, whatever the number happens to be based on the angle, but the power factor is going to be a leading power factor, which is to say the circuit is more capacitive than it is inductive. Or a lagging power factor, as the example was initially, means that we have a larger inductor than we do capacitor, and we say that we have a more inductive circuit. So what's left after we cancel the two out?